Are you sitting at home with a balding scalp or you're losing your hair and you're just hoping that some research team or group of experts somewhere in the world is going to present to you the magic bullet? Well, UCLA scientists may just have brought us a little bit closer to that reality with the new molecule PP405. Is it hype? Or is this going to be the balding cure that we've all been hoping for? Hi, I'm Dr. Jonathan Hopkirk, Sydney-based hair loss doctor and founder of Levels of You, hair loss company that treats patients across Australia on a daily basis. And I'm also someone that deals with hair loss myself and fights hair loss myself on a daily basis. So in today's video, we are going to discuss this new and exciting hair loss molecule PP405. The four key things you are going to get from this video and that we are going to discuss is one, what on earth is molecule PP405 and how does it work to revive dormant hair follicles? Number two is where are the experts currently at on their clinical trials and their research? So what has been found thus far? Three, when can we expect to see this new and exciting molecule on the market for our personal use? And four, what are my personal views and precautionary considerations that I want to throw into the mix before we get too swept up about this being the new balding cure? All right, let's dive into it. So what is molecule PP405? Well, we know how widespread hair loss is and how many people in the community it impacts. So some 80% of men in their lifetime will experience thinning or balding and some 50% of women in their lifetime will experience hair loss, thinning or balding. So when we age or when we have hormonal changes or environmental changes, there are changes in our hair follicles that can lead to those follicles becoming dormant. And a lot of that centers around those stem cells no longer functioning in the way that we need them to for the hair to thrive. We know that we've got ingredients like minoxidil and finasteride on the market that work to help a lot of people but there's also a lot of people with hair loss concerns that don't want to take those certain drugs or haven't been able to achieve great results with those drugs so enter into the market the ucla team who have been working on pp405 this new and exciting molecule which reawakens those follicles by reactivating dormant stem cells so they have been researching this for close to a decade now and what they found initially has been quite promising in the early human trials in 2023 orange county usa the ucla team conducted an experiment where they got a group of people to apply the ingredient molecule pp405 in a topical solution to their scalp for a period of a week every night and what did they find well they found that they developed statistically significant hair growth so the interesting thing about the growth that they achieved where you compare it to maybe some other hair loss treatments on the market is that it actually revived full thick terminal hairs not that baby like peach fuzz hair that we can sometimes see with people where they actually use a topical treatment or even an oral treatment, but the follicles have been turned off too long and it only revives vellus hairs, not terminal hairs. So it's an important distinction to make. So this is encouraging. So how on earth does it work? So what it essentially does in the most simplest form is you have this particular protein, which is keeping stem cells pushed down and stopping them from function. So they can't assert their beautiful abilities of conducting the orchestra that is the follicle so this protein its job in this world is to keep those stem cells dormant well pp405 comes along and it stops that protein from having this inhibitory effect on those stem cells so the stem cells can start to function again and then that hair follicle can enter the hair growth cycle again so it's a very simplistic way of understanding how this molecule works now this approach is very distinct from how other ingredients like finasteride and minoxidil work whereas it doesn't just stimulate new blood flow to the area 
it doesn't just turn off the hormonal pathway or mitigate the hormonal pathways that can lead to hair loss. This is actually working directly at the level of the stem cells that are surrounding the follicle. So where is the UCL18 currently at from a trial perspective? Well, the team have been working on this particular molecule for nearly a decade. And because of the initial early encouraging results, they have formed the pharmaceutical company Palash Pharmaceuticals, backed by the old big player Google Ventures. So then to develop further on the initial encouraging findings that they had from the earlier studies, in 2024 in August, they've basically commenced a phase 2A clinical trial where they've got 60 participants who are going to be using the PP405 molecule over a longer period of time to assess safety and efficacy. What has been encouraging thus far, even though there's been smaller trials and a small numbers of participants, they have experienced and found no adverse events, no side effects. And because it's topically used and topically applied, there is theorized to be very, very little systemic absorption, which we know is always going to lead to, in theory, a much lower side effect profile, which we love. So when do we expect to see and when can we potentially be putting this east of a molecule on our scalps to see if it revives our hair follicles? Well, we know that clinical trials, and for good reason, can take a fair while. So even though they've been working on it for a decade, the likelihood is it's going to be some further years before they get to a point where it's going to be able to be FDA approved and on the market. And that has been pitched to be anywhere between 2027 to 2030. But likelihood is probably 2030 with the way that these things go. Now, this could well, if it goes really well, revolutionize the way we treat hair loss. And wouldn't that be great? But there are some precautionary things that we need to consider before we get swept up on the hype train. So what are my personal views and precautionary considerations about this new molecule before we get swept up into thinking that it's going to be the cure? like anything we need to see its safety on a large scale if we take any molecule doesn't matter if it's something that's in a sunscreen or if it's something that's even in a water bottle and you only give that to 100 people or in these trials for instance you only give it to 60 people well then what happens when you then expand that and you give that to 6 million people so if we think about 80 percent of men in the world are going to experience hair loss in their time well a lot of those people might want to trying to restore their hair. You think about 50% of the female population experiencing hair loss in their time, a lot of those women are going to want to restore their hair. So this would be potentially an agent that would be used on a huge scale, particularly given it's topical as well. So we want to know that it is as safe as houses. And you don't learn that until you use that on large populations. So safety is always the most important thing and the prime concern when doctors or anyone are going to start looking at using a new ingredient. So safety is a big one. We need more time, more real data to be able to show what this does on diverse populations. Number two is, well, what level of severity of baldness can this potentially revive? So is it someone who's got mild to moderate male pattern hair loss or female pattern hair loss? Is it someone who's got alopecia areata? Is it someone that's got telogen effluvium? Is it someone that's got some underlying autoimmune conditions. So what level of usability or applicability is there with this particular ingredient? So how many people are going to be able to get benefits from this particular molecule, which is a very exciting question. What is the long term efficacy like? So how effective is it past that one week? So obviously these clinical trials that have run last year, it would be great to know, OK, if we use this particular topical molecule for a period of five years, do the results start to dwindle or does it keep those stem cells revived forever? Wouldn't that be great? Because we know drugs like finasteride, drugs like minoxidil, people do plateau. So is it going to be one of those things that, yes, this is another tool in the basket, which is great. It's not the cure, so to speak, but it's another tool in the basket that will give us on average X amount of time of results. So it'll be really interesting to know what the long-term efficacy and effectiveness is gonna be like from this particular agent. Then how does this molecule interact and fit in with other hair loss modalities? Is it gonna be something that plays nice with low level laser light therapy or is there gonna be some canceling out of the two? 
you know, is there going to be some situation where it plays nice with minoxid on finasteride or is one going to potentially impact the other in a negative way? Likelihood is there's probably going to be synergy between these because they're working on different pathways, but we don't know until they're used together. Are there other things that we need to be really mindful of? You've got other things that you might be using in the system that are turning over cells of the scalp, you know, particular other topicals. Is it going to interact well with tretinoin? Is it going to interact well with other medications that people might be taking on a daily basis? So these are the things that you learn, you know, typically after market. So those are things that we always need to be mindful of because drug to drug interactions are what can cause side effects. And then that can have a massive impact on the well-being of the patient. So how does this agent fit in the equation of how it works with other known hair loss ingredients, but then also other ingredients and other drugs on the market? And then the final thing is to always consider that hair loss is multifactorial. There is so many things that can lead to hair loss in multiple people, but also in the same person. So whilst it might revive the stem cell function in a patient and get some really good terminal hairs, is that going to be enough to then counter the ongoing bombardment of DHT on DHT sensitive follicles? So it's going to be really, really interesting because one could argue that if it's not turning off that hormonal sequelae that leads to the follicle shrinking, well, is it going to be enough to keep the hair loss at bay for a long period of time would you still need to be doing dual therapy so these are all really interesting questions the healthy levels of precaution to throw into the mix when we're looking at an ingredient like this and going wow cool this is going to be the new cure because there is often a lot of hype about these things so it's important to have a little bit of healthy skepticism before we jump into it too heavily with our hopes but Without being too cynical, it is also a very exciting time for us because this could bring a whole new tool to our basket on the other side of the fence and it could be something that helps millions of people worldwide. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you do enjoy the videos and you want to continue to learn more free information about hair loss and hair loss ingredients and ways that you can hair hack your routine in the home, well, like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next week. Cheers.